All right, welcome back. So as usual, we're going to graph the transformations of tangent and cotangent. And I think I, I set it up so that we can do this in a relatively painless way. And it all goes back to our understanding of basic transformations. And so I guess I don't need the straight line tool for that. But we're going to, no, no, I don't need this. Go away. There we go. So we're going to do this by, of course, first jotting down our tangent graph table and then make the appropriate transformations as usual. So recall that when we graph tangent, you know, just like sine and cosine, you go 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Those are like the, uh, the intervals we use. Uh, we're going to use these x values for tangent. And I'm not going to go through these values over again. Like I, we, we, we talked about how to get these values, and you, all, you should all be able to do it. Uh, you should figure out that that's undefined. That's undefined. And at 0, it's 0. And so you should be able to figure that out. Okay, well, just I'm going to assume you can. So now we make our transformation table. And we notice that my x values here are going to have to be divided by 3, right? There's a 3 times the x, that means we're going to multiply x values by 1 third. So that means the y values don't change, so that's good. So I'll just copy those down. But I'm going to divide all my x values by a third. So negative pi over 2 divided by a third. And again, you, I know you might have to go off to the side to do this, but that's fine. It would be negative pi over 6. This would be so times a third negative pi over 12. 0 times a third is 0. And then pi over 12. And then pi over 6. And what do you know? We've already got, we basically got our table. We just need to graph. And so now we have some options on, like, where we put things. So notice, like, pi over 2 normally went here. Like, if you look back at my tangent graph, right, pi over 2 was, like, that one tick mark away. So since the pi over 2 kind of turned into the pi over 6, or the negative pi over 6, I might just do that, make that negative pi over 6. Now, you don't have to. You can scale kind of how you want as long as the your axis is scaled correctly. Uh, whoops. That's not scaled correctly. That's two tick marks away. So make sure if you're going to do things, do it right, Mr. Ferullo. Then that would be pi over 12, negative pi over 12. And in fact, just, I mean, I expect you to label it, but sometimes it just, the writing gets in the way of the points. So there are asymptotes there. And now we're going to graph 0, 0, negative pi over 12, negative 1, and pi over 12, 1. And there is one period. There's one period of the tangent graph, of this tangent transformation. Okay? Um, and if, again, if we want to make more, if I ask you to graph two periods, let's say I asked you to do that. This is pi over 12. So now I'll label it since it's not so bad. So that's pi over 12, 2 pi over 12. That would be, uh, no, nope, this would be 3 pi over 12, right? Uh, 3 pi over 12, 4 pi over 12, 5 pi over 12, 6 pi over 12. So you can get these other values. So let, actually, let's do this. That's pi over 6. So another tick mark over would be 2 pi over 6, which is also known as pi over 3. 3 pi over 6 would be here. And if we just continue the pattern, right, asymptotes, the asymptotes are spaced to these intervals away. So the next asymptote would be there. And then I've got right there would be a negative 1. And again, I'm kind of I'm using 
appealing to my pattern recognition skills here. So I mean there's two periods which I think is sufficient. Okay, and we could we could keep going, but that's two periods, two good periods. Okay, so there's a nice transformation of tangents. Uh, let's quickly, I want to quickly do the one for cotangent. So I'm going to make my cotangent table. And the, the x values are the same. Okay, so tangent and cotangent kind of do their own, they have their own separate intervals. And again, I, I completely have faith in your ability to fill these out on your own. Okay, so don't be intimidated that I can do it so fast. I'm a teacher. Let's do the transformations. So, and, oops. So that now we're going to graph. Now we're going to graph uh, the transformations. So this 2 multiplies the y values by 2. So, so multiply y values by 2. And so all the y column is all going to be multiplied by 2. So two, 0 times 2 is 0, negative 2, undefined, that's still undefined, 2 and then 0. And then we're going to uh, divide, uh, well, let's use, we're going to continue with multiply. Multiply my x values by a fourth. Values, no, that looks terrible. Values by one fourth. So negative pi over two divided by a fourth is negative pi over eight. Negative pi over 16. That's still 0, pi over 16, and pi over 8. And now we graph. So again, I'm going to put my negative pi over 8 and pi over 8 here. You don't have to. You can put them where you want as long as they're spaced correctly. So I'll put my negative pi over 8 there, pi over 8. And I have an asymptote at 0. And at negative pi over 16, which is here, I have negative 1. At pi over 16, I have a 1. And at pi over 8 and negative pi over 8, I have zeros. And we're going to take, it's going to look like the same shape as cotangent, the normal cotangent graph, which we've discussed. So there's one period. If we wanted another, right, if we wanted another, let's follow the pattern. So, I mean, if we want to see like one full section. So let's follow the pattern. So I have a, a 0, and then it goes to negative 1. So I have a 0, then after that I would go to negative 1. And then after the negative 1, there's an asymptote, so there'd be an asymptote here. And there'd be an asymptote here. So we'll get to, we'll sketch two full periods. So can ignore, can ignore that little email there. So there's two full periods. So, and let's, let's label this asymptote. So if that's pi over 8, you double it, you get 2 pi over 8, which you can reduce to pi over 4 if you'd like. And this would be negative 2 pi over 8. Um, good, so there we are, two good transformations. One thing I just want to draw your attention to is, if you go back here, right, the period of tangent is normally pi, right? The period of tangent is pi. The period of this guy, well, how do you, I mean, what's the distance from this zero to that zero, right, the length of one cycle? That's 2 pi over 6, so the period is 2 pi over 6, but that reduces to pi over 3, right? And what do you know? If I wanted the period just by looking at this, it's pi over b, not 2 pi over b. So because the, the period of tangent is normally pi, if you want the period of a transformation, it's pi over b, not 2 pi over b. 
and same here for cotangent, right? The, the, the period for like from asymptote to asymptote is 2 pi over 8, which equals pi over 4. But you could also get that by just looking at your b value and doing pi over 4. But in any case, for tangent and cotangent, if you want a quick way to get the period, it's pi over b instead of 2 pi over b.